Oh, we are definitely a lot faster. I think we no, we're doing it. way faster yeah, this time. We, okay, yeah, the novel was worth. Novel was worth. <laughs> Wait, who just freaking emoted? <laughs> this will push for it. Dragging runs. All right, oh, yeah, too far take... away. It's too far away. It's too far away. My... Middle. Yeah, I'm bursting. Nice. Okay, bursting too. Someone. Nice. We want Dan. Yeah. We'll take Dan. Yeah, we are. Yeah, right we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 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 Middle. We're over points, might as well get as much points as yeah, we want. Just shoot, just shoot, just shoot, just shoot, just shoot. Don't even care about the missiles. Two seconds, two seconds, just go, just go, just go. Nice, nice. Okay. Oh my god. What did we get? Wow. Like, Woo! We we um, that was like two million like increase. Two million more. Yeah. Holy that shit. That was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, y'all? And welcome on in. The Nikkei Co op event is finally live, and I just finished my three runs. I made a pre made group with some guildies, some friends, and it was an absolute blast. I think this is such a cool mode to spice things up. Each one of you, uh, you and your squad members, each take control of one Nikkei, and you have to make sure your team comp is good. You want to try to maximize the damage. You're working together to defeat those weak points, circles, shoot down the missiles, destroy the boss and maximize the damage so you can get that sweet sweet currency and buy some cool rewards in the shop so in this video let's go over some team synergy what we learned from the boss a few tips and tricks and then end with the shop and what to buy out because make sure y'all at least watch that part carefully because it's kind of tricky in terms of how much currency you get and what you can buy out but anyways yeah hopefully this helps some of y'all out it's such a fun thing i hope you guys enjoy it as well and uh, let's get into it Real quick before we jump into team comp suggestions and boss mechanics, all that stuff, I want to show you all real fast here. You do get a slight buff for using Elysion, Elysian Nikkei, however you want to say that, and I believe this is also Missileless Nikkei. So units like Helm, for example, for Elysion, and then Leader for uh, Missileless will give you all a slight bonus. All right, guys, I pulled up some footage from our very first run. We were just trying this out for the first time. The game actually opts you into the, your highest power level, and this is a good thing to note on that make sure if you are playing um if you're playing in a matchmaking situation so with four other randoms make sure you guys have a cohesive team comp now if you don't have any coordination no communication you watching might have to be the person that plays the support role i know everyone wants to be the damage dealer but remember that the overall rewards given are based on how well you do as a team so someone will have to play that support role i know but let's go ahead and talk about why that's important in terms of team synergy so we're not going to run four Scarlets. I do believe you can double up on them if you want. But um, let's go ahead and scroll through ahead here. And let's look at this comp right now real quick. So we opted for a Burst 1, a Burst 2, right? Leader and Rupee. And one thing to note is these are both 20 seconds. So we can just have one of each. If you do have a Burst 1 or 2 that's 40 seconds, like Paulus right here, uh, for example, you you will want to double up on that and have a 20 second in there or another 40 second just so you can maximize the amount of, you know, bursts possible. Try to get to 20 seconds, and if you have a 40 second one, you need to double up on that so you can rotate quickly and get burst one, burst two, burst three, full bursts in the fastest rotation possible. If you do have units like Leader, Volume, Dala for, to lower the cooldowns, those are always very, very good support style units. And then let's talk about damage dealers. Number one, of course, I think is still Scarlet. Um, just because most people have invested into her if you do have her. But units like Guillotine, I think units maybe like Alice, potentially Haran. But um, I tried out Haran and she's going to be more for AoE damage. I know units like Drake, I've heard shotgun damage dealers. If those are your highest damage dealing unit and you want to be in that damage dealing role, I think those can work well. Just make sure you pick, you know, your highest damage dealer. And if they have imprints and things like that, that'll give you a power boost. Don't worry about imprints, though. Um, this is not definitely doesn't feel like a whale mode. There might be a leaderboard later, but right now I didn't see one. So just make sure if you're with some friends or if you're randoming up, try to just work together and have a cohesive team synergistic comp and if that means stepping down from the damage dealing role to play support you got to do what you got to do to maximize your rewards all right let's jump into the boss mechanics next okay guys let's just quickly talk about the boss i did mention it's what his name is like altazen mark six it's the train boss that a lot of y'all have already fought and it's super super simple very very easy so you and your boys your squad um you're just going to be focusing to get as much damage as possible as you can see up here we have missiles launching and if you can try to dedicate your support units so the leaders the dollars the rupees whatever the burst one and two typically the non-damage dealers that are more there to support via burst and buffs have them shoot down the missiles in the beginning and have your major damage dealers like the scarlets the guillotines harans uh drakes whatever it might be 
focusing on doing as much damage to the boss as possible, right? That's how you're going to maximize the damage, but I do think most of y'all can hit 3.6 mil. If you can in the comments below, guys, let me know if you're able to hit the max amount of rewards, 3.6 mil damage, and if you were with randoms, if you were the pre-made, and maybe how far into the game you are. That might help me figure out, you know, how easy they made this mode uh, for the new players versus like the end game players. But overall, the main thing to note is just take care of those circles that pop up in the middle of the screen and then just maximize the damage done. Shoot down the missiles if need be. But actually, sometimes you can actually ignore the missiles and focus on damage, especially when the clock is winding down. Just make sure no one ends up dying. But we never really came close besides Scarlet, who hurts herself. You know, that's the way she works. But yeah, overall, the train boss super simple. Spam your burst as long as as fast as possible. And the biggest thing is just to make sure there's a circle, by the way, that I'm talking about. Make sure you all focus that down as if you let that through right it's very very bad news but it's pretty simple as long as you're all can aim a little bit just make sure everyone focuses up and shoots the circle spam the burst skills as fast as possible and if you have a cohesive team comp right a burst one burst two and a burst three on the lowest cooldowns possible i think you will all hit that 3.6 mil damage very easily just for reference this first run right here with rupee i think we ended up like nine mil our best run was around 12 mil i think where we swapped out rupee for um who was it novel because of the damage increase but almost anything will work guys if you have like a signal for burst two just make sure you have that cohesive team comp and then pick your roles and just have a lot of fun all right next up let's go ahead and jump into the shop quick recap in the reward info if you do if you use those tips i just said make a good team comp synergy you all have your roles i think most y'all watching will be able to hit that 3.6 mil don't forget to let me know your results how far in are you especially my newer guys if y'all are able to get that 3.6 but i think most people if you've been playing at least a decent amount a week now maybe a few days i think you should be able to get that 3.6 depending on what you you know how good your friends are if you're with randoms whatever but it shouldn't be too difficult that's my guess so take note 1200 is the max let's do some quick math in the shop so if we can get 1200 right and we have three attempts a day and i'll do the math guys no one likes doing this but i'll do it for y'all um that is 1200 times three we get three attempts per day and assuming we get the max amount that's 3600 per day and we have three total days of running this so there's two days and 10 hours left Hopefully y'all, as of watching this, are able to get that first day in to get some extra currency. And if we times that by three, that gives us 10,800 maximum total broken cores, which is the currency for this event. So let's look at what we can buy. And here's my suggestion, guys. My suggestion in terms of just progression is going to be getting the core dust. Picking, first off, let me say this, get the purple instead of the blue. Because if you do the math on this as well, you get a slight, slight discount for buying the purple 12 hours compared to the one hour, like the 12 boxes, instead of just getting these boxes here. So I would try to get the core dust first, as this might be one of your major bottlenecks. Um, there's a major threshold breakthrough at, I think, leveling past 80. And then I just passed level 120, and the core dust cost is ridiculous. So I would try to stock up now while you can. And then secondary, buy either credits or battle data, whichever one is bottlenecking you in that regard. A lot of y'all might be scra uh, strapped for credits, as if you're also leveling up your tactics room. Uh, that stuff is so expensive to level up those passives, right? If you guys have seen that. But ultimately... Um, let's say you're more of a casual player and you just enjoy the advising, the kind of romance system where you talk to the Nikkei's. Maybe go for the friendship stuff. Um, if y'all just want extra pulls, this is pretty costly though, boys. Um, maybe you can go for some extra gems. It's not that many though. So in terms of just raw progression, min-maxing, I would suggest core dust and then one of credit or battle data. At least it's the purple version, not the blue. Um, and that's about all you can buy because if we look at the math here, uh, 1150 for the purple set. Let's say we want to buy all the core dust. We do 1150 times 5. That leaves us with 5750, which is over half, right? Because if you double this, we get 11.5. 11, 11,500 is over the 10,800. We can't buy out even two of these boxes. So we'll be able to get like max core dust and then like a little bit of the battle data or credits. Now, I did buy three of these just because I already hit that 120 threshold. I'm already uh, limit broken past that. Um, but you guys will definitely need the core dust uh, if you haven't already passed 120 or even 80. All right. So I think that wraps it up, guys. Depending on just buy whatever you want in the shop. But for min maxing, those are my suggestions. Enjoy. This is one of the most fun events. Don't forget to let me know in the comments your uh, results and progress. And I hope we see more co-op events, more bosses with friends. This was so much fun. And I think this is one of the best things I've played in Nikkei so far. It was done pretty well, too, besides a little bit of lag at the beginning. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.